In the last video of two secrets to create PowerPoint videos like a pro, I promised to show you how I created the stickman animation if you showed interest. In this video, I am keeping my promise. This is going to be an elaborate but interesting video with step-by-step -step explanation. So watch the video till the end without skipping steps. Before we even learn to make stickman animation, let us understand where to use the graphics in the first place. When it comes to using visual tools, there is a simple thumb rule I follow. To visualize objects like say a human heart or parts of a skull, I use either photos or illustrations. To visualize relationships between elements, I use diagrams. To visualize the relationship between numbers, I use charts or infographics. To visualize actions and emotions while explaining a concept, I use stickman animation. So be clear about where you would use stickman animations before you start your project. Now with that out of the way, let us understand the first step in creating the animations. The most important thing in a stickman animation video is not finding the stickman graphics. It is writing a tight script that communicates the message with clarity and engagement. Because it is the script that determines the visuals you would use and not the other way around. You see, usually when I record tutorial videos, I don't write any script. I focus entirely on the steps in the process. The reason is, in a screen capture video of a tutorial, I don't have to think about the visuals I would be using to support my explanation. After all, the visuals I need to use are already there on the screen. I just need to focus on explaining my ideas with as much clarity and simplicity as possible. However, explaining an idea or a concept using motion graphics is different. The thing is, you not only need to be clear about what you would say, but also how you would say it visually. Therefore, you need to put down the words first that simplify the concept, then find the visuals that support those words. Here is the script I used to record the video last week. I wrote and rewrote the script multiple times till I could convey my ideas in the simplest way possible. Now, let me give you a quick hack I use while writing the script. If you want your script to sound logical and persuasive, then use a framework to structure your thoughts. Now, the framework could be anything. It could be problem impact resolution framework or it could be Attention, Interest, Desire, Action Framework or IDA Framework. You choose the framework based on the message you want to communicate. In my case, for the video I recorded last week, I used a simple What, Why, How Framework. Now, let me quickly elaborate the framework. What? Use Screen Recorder instead of PowerPoint's native video recording capabilities. So that is the prescription, which is What? Now, when you prescribe, naturally the question you get is why? Here, the reasons are you get better editability options, sound quality, etc. And after you explain the logic, you then go to step-by-step -step explanation and that is where how part comes in. In my case, the how part is the step-by-step -step process in recording screen capture in the presenter view mode. And one more thing, when I write my script, I write it while saying the words aloud. So the script comes out exactly the way I talk. I make sure that I don't leave out anything in the script. I even write the pauses, hesitations, laughs, everything. And when I edit my script, I give it a lot of focus. I usually take a break of a day or two and then I revisit the script. If any part of the script doesn't sound like me, I throw it away, I change the words. And only when I am totally convinced that my script sounds like me, I give it my stamp of approval. And that is also the reason why I don't rely on AI to write my scripts. Because I feel that it sounds too sterile and unnatural most of the times. Now, if you observe in my script, there are areas in the script that are marked in red. Take a look at this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, etc. These are all the portions marked for screen capture. Now, if you had watched this video with the script in hand, you would have noticed that in these screen capture portions, I would not have used the exact words written here. As I mentioned earlier, I just improvised based on the situation. However, in the portions related to stickman animation, you would have noticed that I would have followed the exact script word for word. So that is something I wanted you to keep in mind. 
Anyway, let's continue to step number two, which is about finding the graphics. Before I go to step two, I am Ram Gopal from presentationprocess.com. We help professionals like you create engaging presentations. Now, this is where we get to the part about picking the stickman graphics. The key here is to find the graphics that look consistent across different poses, emotions, etc. This ensures that your video looks consistent. For that, you have a couple of options. The first option is to use Canva. Let me open a blank presentation. Let us say I want to add stickman animation slides. The first thing I do is to go to elements. Here in the search elements space, I write stickman and the word that I want to search for. For example, if I want to say stickman with laptop, so I can say stickman laptop and hit enter. And you could see that there are quite a few very interesting options available for me to pick from. When I go to see all, I can see all the options. Let us say I want to pick something like this. I have my stickman available here. Now, if I want a different emotion, I can go for something like this, where the person is thinking over a particular idea or a script. And if I want something else, I can click on this and you can see I have another option. Now, the reason why I prefer Canva to create my stickman animations is Canva has a variety of options available for a certain stickman. For example, you can see that this stickman graphic is available in different emotions, different actions. Let us say I want to add a new slide and this time I want to add a stickman graphic, maybe climbing stairs. So let me go to stickman and say stickman steps and hit enter. Now you see that I have options like this and it is the same graphic drawn by the same artist but is available now in different poses. And that is really the thing that I want, especially when I want to see consistency in the look and feel of my videos. And when it comes to steps, you see that I have a variation of someone trying to climb the steps with a lot of difficulty and someone walking across a river on balls and there is someone trying to build something in steps and even a ladder. Let me add one more slide and you can see there are, there are steps of this ladder. Can you see with just a single keyword of steps, I have so many alternatives which allows me to pick the exact graphic that I want to convey my ideas. Another place I go to for stickman graphics is nonproject.com. You can see that there are quite a few beautiful options available for me in different poses. Another option is places like freepick.com, which offer you a whole range of stickman types. Now, the thing to note is if you have premium versions in these sites, you get even more options to choose from. For example, I have premium versions for freepick and Canva. Of course, I have paid for these subscriptions myself. They are not sponsored or given to me by these organizations. And if you want to watch a video where I used stickman graphics from Noun Project and Freepik, you can click on the link in the iCard and watch this video called Which of these two types of presenters are you? Where I have combined my talking head video with stickman graphics. It's a very interesting way to use these graphics. And once you finalize the place from where you would get your graphics, the next step is to add notes to your slides. Different presenters use different methods for this part. Some prefer to audio record their entire script first, either with their own voice or using AI avatars. Then, based on the audio, they organize the graphics on their slides. But I prefer to read the script myself. Not because I am the best voice talent there is. I'd prefer to sound like normal me than as a professional voiceover artist. And more importantly, while I do my audio recording, I prefer to sync the visuals with my words. That is why I created these slides and the accompanying notes for each of these slides. A couple of things to note here. After I cut sentences from my original script and pasted them as notes in these slides, I made slight changes to the text written here based on the kind of graphics that I used. For example, when I got this beautiful graphic of a stick man sticking in the web, I couldn't resist myself from rewriting the script saying, once you are in PowerPoint's recording environment, you are stuck inside it. And you can see that this person is stuck inside a web. So you make those small little tweaks to add some interest to your presentation. Another thing to note is the kind of fonts you use should go with the mood of your narration. 
For example, you can see that I've kept the whole mood light throughout this video and therefore I wanted a font that reflected that particular mood. In this case, I used a script called Mansalva which is available readily in Canva. The script is casual and at the same time clear and easy to read. So I chose this font. And once we finish adding the notes, it is time to go to the next step which is about adding relevant animation. Now fortunately, Canva has a very easy way to add animations across slides. For example, once I finish adding all the graphics to my slides, all I need to do is to go to this option here called Animate and then I can choose this option called Animate Entire Design and I can choose one of these. This is the one that I chose, Fun. And once I have this clicked, you can see that the entire set of slides will have the same kind of animation where everything just comes in nicely. The same way, if I want to change all the animations in one go, I can choose another kind of animation like this or this. I really wish PowerPoint had this kind of a simple option available where I can use a standard animation across all slides. It would make video creation so much easier. Anyway, let's move on. After we add the animation, it is time for the next step, which is to screen capture our slides with Stickman animation in the presenter view in Canva. Yes, Canva has a presenter view option just like in PowerPoint. All I need to do to access that option is to go to this place here called present. And here the second option I have is called presenter view. And I just need to say present and I get this view here. Now I need to use a screen recorder program to record just this portion here, which is the slide area. And once I have that done, I can keep reading my notes here and I can keep moving my slides one after another like this. And I can see the entire animation is captured quite beautifully and it makes it so much easier for me to edit later on. So in this video for stickman portions, I used Canva in presenter view. And for the portions where I had to demonstrate in Camtasia, I used Camtasia 2024 version to record Camtasia 2025. This workflow saves a ton of time in editing my videos. I don't have to waste hours trying to match the audio with animated graphics every step of the way. I just keep presenting like I would present any normal PowerPoint slide. Once the recording session is over, it is time to stitch everything together into a single video. You stitch the portions involving stickman animation with screen capture clips in relevant places and complete the video as guided by your script. Once done, you export the finished video. By the way, do you know that it is fairly easy to create your own stickman graphics in PowerPoint? If you want me to show you how, please leave a comment saying so. I'll try to make a video showing you the exact step-by-step -step process to make your own stickman in PowerPoint. And when you know how to create your own stickman graphics, which is super easy inside PowerPoint, you get the creative freedom to express your ideas in the exact way you intended. If you like this video, there are two things you can do. The first one is to sign up to our free snackable PowerPoint course called How to Make More Creative and Attractive Slides Fast, which is a 10 part series with 10 super short emails with step by step video tutorials to make your slides instantly creative. The link to this free snackable PowerPoint course is in the description box below the video. You click on the link and sign up to this course. And the next thing you can do is to watch this video called how to creatively animate your icons in PowerPoint. It's a very simple technique. It's surprisingly effective. You would sit down and wonder why you didn't think of this simple idea yourself. So click on this link, watch the video next, and I'll see you inside that video.